and stepping back on the ranch, it just brings solace. Kind of clears your mind. I can't really explain the warm feeling that it brings to me. A feeling that just goes right from your head to your toes. We are at the Dutton Ranch in uh, southern Perkins County here in South Dakota. This ranch has been in our family for three generations. My granddad homesteaded it here in 1915. My father was born in 1927 and he, of course, uh, was always part of the ranch and, and lived on the ranch in his entire life. And he operated it until he retired in, in uh, 2007. In uh, 2010, I retired from my uh, position uh, as an educator uh, and school administrator, and then I've been on the ranch since that time, and I've been the primary manager and, and running livestock, uh, primarily Angus beef, and uh, we run Hereford bulls, and we're a cattle producer, and uh, we sell calves to the feedlots, generally. My, my brother Dave uh, and uh, my brother Darrell are also owners of the ranch. We have it in a Dutton Ranch LLC and, and uh, I lease the ranch from the LLC. I'm currently the secretary of the LLC, so I do the minutes because I'm the retired city finance officer in Spearfish and so you know, I'm quite familiar with doing that type of work, so it ended up just falling on my shoulders. I am very firmly believe that we are just stewards, and our grandparents and our parents who had passed this ranch down to us, and it needs to, to pass on in a better condition than we received it. If you manage a ranch conservationally, you're gonna get way more out of it than if you abuse the land and then you have to wait for it to recover. And so you don't overuse it, you manage it, you rotate your herd. You know, you think it's a sacrifice, but it really isn't, it's, it's a benefit. My dad was instrumental. Uh, he was, uh, back uh, 20 years ago, he was the regional range manager of the year on some of his conservation practices that he used. But one of the things that he started doing was doing a lot of cross fencing and, and breaking the big pastures down into uh, section sized pastures. I have continued with uh, that uh, cross fencing. Uh, he didn't get all the pastures broken up into these four and five hundred acre pastures which we feel is pretty good for the number of head of livestock that we run. That's what we've done primarily as far as the grazing management. We want to leave the land as good or better than how we received it. One of the things that my, da my dad always did, and I've continued that practice, is trying to reserve some areas for the wildlife and the birds, uh, species. The Dutton Dam uh, was actually built in 1935 as a WPA dam, and then it was uh, washed out in 1951, and then my dad uh, he worked with Ducks Unlimited uh, in, on a land easement where he allowed them 30 years use of the uh, surrounding property of that land where it couldn't be grazed at all. Once it was done, it was, it's just was an amazing addition to our property. 
We fenced it off so it would never have livestock around it or only if they crawled in. And it's great habitat for, uh, for birds and for all of our local animals. Uh, nothing I enjoy more than seeing the, the deer and the antelope and, and the varieties of birds, the uh, upland grouse and partridge as well as the ducks and geese that uh, nest here. And we want to share our, our land, our ranch with, with all those other species too by fencing off areas that are heavily used by those species of wildlife and not allowing the cattle to overgraze. If we didn't have the river fenced off, the cattle would spend all their time in, in the heat of the summer right next to the river and it would kill all the willows and uh, they would tromp out a lot of the native species that typically are along those drainages. When my parents had started a great estate planning, they had started turning over land to us long before they were even thinking about retiring. And so they were transferring the, the maximum value over to us kids early on. And by the time that you know they were going into nursing homes, et cetera, there was only 60 acres of this ranch left that were not in the children's name. And we bought those 60 acres from them and ended up now that we as a family, as siblings, own the place. And we knew that we needed to do something to make it easier to manage. And therefore we formed it into a partnership LLC. And the fun thing about our family is it was instilled in us about family matters. And we were taught very strong work ethics. Well, first I would do research with attorneys and find an attorney that has a lot of experience setting up either uh, trusts or LLCs because there's different ways you can go about it. LLC made the most sense to us. You know, someone that specializes in, in land preservation and land, uh, you know, in family ranching or farming. And then you have to sit down as a family and brainstorm with the pros and the cons to determine, you know, what is your long-term goal. When we set up our LLC, our long-term goal was conservation, and the preservation of the land for future generations. We're losing the open space, you know, and we don't know what it's gonna look like 200 years from now, but this ranch will remain the same.